Uh, no, I'm going to give you sort of the, the typical geek answer, which is I, I think we're heading towards the Star Trek computer world where, you know, you've got these machines that can totally understand you and do, do your bidding, but they're sort of in, in an ideal world, which I think we're going we're, we're gonna to reach. They're not going to do anything evil, and they're going to have a lot of guardrails. I think the next 12 to 24 months, like I said, um, there's going to be this plethora of, I think, Scott, you said it, millions and millions of agents, what I call them agents, like these autonomous tools that are doing your bidding for you. They're going to have the ability to know, hey, look, when you tell me to send an email to John Smith with his most recent invoice, they're going to know how to create that invoice, who John Smith is, how to send him an email, and they're going to be able to do all of these different things for you. I actually think that's coming sooner rather than later, probably because I'm building it. But I think that we're heading to a world where these, uh, these autonomous machines are uh, specialized for different use cases. They can also be specialized for more general sort of helpfulness. And we're going to start to have these tools available for us to do a lot of our hard, either hard work or tedious work for us. Uh, and that's sort of a, maybe it's an ideal scenario, but that's the one that I do think that we're going to get to. Uh, an optimistic one. I, I think the two most valuable sets of conversations humans are really having these days are in education and healthcare. That's yes. where you're going to create the, you know, the biggest arcs and changes in a person's life. And so to have tools that are helping, I mean, nobody who's reasonable is arguing that teachers have too many resources and that kids are learning too much. Uh, <laughs> and so uh, if we can give, like, I think what Khan Academy has just created uh, is the, the beginnings of what we're going to have where every single kid gets a perfect, customized, always ready to help tutor for them. And, you know, Cyrano's got uh, tools in it where we can analyze a person's learning style. And so we can tell you a person's learning style based on a minute of their speech. And so if we could just give that to every teacher and say, hey, based on Johnny's homework, you want to use, you know, graphs and images, not stories and metaphors as a lazy example. Um, and so I see education getting a huge boost and then obviously healthcare. If we can build tools that help people to be more on track with their treatment plan, whether that's medication management, whether that's getting them to do their physical therapy or their behavioral change that they need to do to get better, uh, those sorts of tools that help the, the physicians and the medical staff impact change more effectively and new innovate medicine. with those and patients. And, and it's also just such scare. I mean, we've all had a friend or family member um, have a devastating conversation with a physician and then they have to remember it and apply stuff. And I think those conversations, having tools that help everyone in the room really understand what's going on and what needs to happen next. I see those two things as being where it's not the day-to-day -day moment, you know, the healthcare stuff for most of us, but those are going to be the big, thank God that tool exists now kind of things that we're going to have. And then education can be the day-to-day. -day. Yeah. I mean, something I'm excited about, and here's a real, real quick analogy. It's kind of like when, I don't know, maybe in the the eighties or the nineties, which depending on the age, you might or might not realize this, but to look up information and have access to data, you would have to go to the library, look at the uh, Dewey decimal system, look in the card catalog, and it would take, I don't know, like, uh, 30 minutes just to find like potentially something that's available. And then it's not there. You know, like same thing with like renting movies back in the day. You used to have to go to the movie store and hope that they have the new release and then they don't, right? And then you have to wait three days for it. Like, and now we go to streaming or you type in a couple keystrokes and you have access to information or movies. So I look at that same thing happening with outcomes, right? Where there's gonna be a premium and massive opportunity for people that are creative and really, really think through a creative lens uh, because then they could just dictate the outcomes they want from the AI, kind of like Jarvis, not to quote a, uh, a Star Trek reference, but let's 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 go Marvel, right? Let's go with Tony Stark and Jarvis, where you can say these are the outcomes I want. This is the order, and then it happens for you, right? And that could be like, for example, um, to bring it to real world sales and marketing is like, okay, I want this exact target market with this demographics, this company revenue range, who is having who is having these problems. I want you to identify that, pull that up, create a five step email sequence, emphasize this and this and then provide metrics and execute it over a 30 year period. And it's all done for you versus all the tactical nuances that you have to do that. 
So that's what I'm excited about seeing that because I'm a big outcomes person. So I love the fact that I could be like, boom, go. And then it happens. So that's that's uh, my take on it. Oh, wow. All right. <laughs> um, I want to see this also from a perspective more on the anxiety and not on the peer side, because I, I'm excited about what is possible. And I strongly believe that the human race in itself has the option to make a decision for the positive side. And when I remember last week when we were marching with our dog in the Palisades or on the 4th of July with all the people, what I saw, happy people were cheering, were uh, were positive were for each other. This is the mindset normally, yeah? And I think AI could help us or to get to the next level. There is a lot of problems that we can solve. Let's start by the little ones and let's go then step by step to the next one. But uh, I'm, um, I'm going on vacation back to Europe and I know there is right now a war that is absolutely not necessary in my opinion. And um, our, there is a lot of issues that uh, absolutely needs help in so many areas. Yeah? AI could really, as God said, are perfectly, in my opinion, not only on the healthcare, on the education side. We have to educate the people more. Or like Ryan said, or, oh, I have access to this information. Come on, if we look at that and we access right now all the information about the, let's say, what happened. Um, and I'm as positive as Shanif in that area. There is thousands of thousands and thousands of programmers that are coming out right now with solutions to bring us to the next level. Let's think positive and use that. I, I don't see the dark angel anywhere who is using that in a negative sense. And if we are here, we can we can interfere. We can do something against that. We can stand up. We can make regulations. We can help that. So. I, I, I'm positive. I, I want to stay positive. I want to see problems solved. Realistically, problems solved right now uh, make my life better. And then we go to the next step. So I'm very, very positive. Like this, it's, it's, it's inspiring, this meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. We communicate. We try to get the best out of it. And we make the next step. This is progress.